Welcome to Tulla in the heart of East Clare for the 2024 Mesita GA All-Ireland Post-Primary Schools Senior C Hurling Final between Skullpole, Kilfinnan and Kalashta Vera Baligar. Beautiful afternoon here in East Clare, as I mentioned, for this highly anticipated final between the Limerick and Galway schools. Ahead of this afternoon's clash, we caught up with both camps ahead of today's final with Skullpole of Kilfinnan speaking first. Lads, look, the common question or common theme through all the interviews today is, I suppose, the, the, the atmosphere and the build-up in, in the school, in the, in the, in the run-up to a big fixture like this. What's it been like? Uh, it's been great, yeah. It's, it's good achievement by the boys to get here. You know, it's, it's almost bonus territory for us after we in the Munster. Very happy with that and great for the school you now. A bit of exposure and a bit of excitement around the place, yeah. From the, from the students' point of view, what's it been? Yeah, from the students' point of view, it's been a good buzz around the school the last few days, but... As a team, we're staying focused and there's a big job ahead next weekend. Tell us a little bit about the, the journey so far to get to this point. So coming through Munster, um, had a couple of tough games. Um, came through a draw against Dungarv and got out of the group. Um, played at Glenmore School in the quarterfinal. Very happy with performances on the day. And eventually got us to Munster final. Big day for the school as well. And lads played extremely well. We were delighted to get a good result on the day. And um, yeah, crest of a wave since game coming up uh, it's going to be a big challenge uh, taking on Ballygar a Galway side they're, they're all, Galway teams always plenty of hurling yeah look they're going to be a good team any team at this stage of the competition is going to be a good side but we know we have in our squad and we're we're, we're, we're plenty capable of getting out on the right side of this game next weekend but what, what has the atmosphere or the buzz been like in training with the, with the rest of the squad knowing that you have this big fixture to look forward to yeah, we're we're training hard now. The last since since I, September, we've been training hard for getting to this stage. Was obviously the dream, and we're here now. So hopefully, a big performance and we get off the line. I suppose from your point of view, uh, you're going to be sending them out at the weekend with, with parting words from the dressing room. What, what what's the what's the key message? I suppose the message we've had great numbers since September. You know, we've had great buy-in from the group of lads, getting regular numbers of training, training hard, training well. So just the message would be, look, there's a lot of work done. Go out, do our best, do ourselves proud. And if the result comes, the result comes. And from your point of view, in terms of the, 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 the squad and the, and the wider school community, uh, it, it, there must be a huge buzz there from the players themselves, but also from, from the other students as well. Yeah, we've the 30 odd man squad and we've been training hard from the start. Every man's contributed to something and it would be nice to bring something home for the rest of the school. First question to, to everybody really that's come in front of us this week is the, the buzz around the school in the build-up to a big game like this. Yeah, um, obviously it's great for the school. Small country schools, I think there's only 200, 250 students in it, 20 in Leaving Cert with me. And uh, yeah, it's just great for, there's a good buzz around the place now. Uh, from your experience of it? Yeah, um, oh, it's been great. It's been our first time winning the, the Con Championship this year in the school's history and obviously a first time now in all Ireland final so there's great buzz around the place and uh, everyone's looking forward to the day and um, yeah it's great for such a small school in the border of Galway and Roscommon uh, to be there and uh, I suppose we're just hoping we can make our chance count on the day. Lads from both both counties on the panel? Yeah it's near mm, more so Galway lads but close enough 50-50 split between the two. Um, you have lads from Ballygar, Four Roads then in Roscommon and at League and Fermanagh as well. So four clubs there, four good clubs. And uh, Look, I suppose in terms of the training and the build up to this, uh, how's that been going? Uh, are you picking from a full panel or, or how, what, what, what's, the, what's the bill of health looking like for the panel? Yeah, so um, we've, we've kind of just kept it the same as what we've done all year. So um, trend away and just going to treat the All Ireland the same as we have with every other game. Um, don't make too much of it because, you know, the, the occasion can can overcome us if, if we allow that to happen. So yeah, we're just taking, we've taken every game as it's come all year and we're just going to treat the same. Um, look, we have a few injury concerns at the moment, um, so we're not really sure if we're going to have a full, full uh, panel to pick from, but the lads that are, are injured uh, are doing all they can to try and get back because we've never been here before and obviously you don't have the chance to come again. So um, that's, that's what we're dealing with, but uh, look, we've, we've a strong panel there and we're hoping that whoever takes the field will, will work as hard as they can and, and try to do the school program today. The buzz within the school from the from the students who are not part of the panel, I suppose, and yourselves. What's it been like to kind of stay in the player bubble and not get too carried away with the excitement in the in the, in the general school, I suppose. Uh, it's tough at times, sure. The 
it's massive excitement. You see all the buses coming up to the semi-final there. Up in Dublin the last day, it was great. And to the Connacht final as well, people waiting after school to come up and see us uh, in Ballinus Slow. So, yeah, it's, it's harder time to stay out of it, but you just have to try your best to uh, stay focused and be ready for the game. And in terms of the opposition skull pole from Kilfinnan and Limerick, uh, Limerick and Galway, always tasty affairs. Yeah, um, we don't know too much about them now, but uh, we know they're going to be a good team and that it's going to be a big challenge to get over the line. But yeah, we'll try our best. Finally, for yourself, I suppose, look, the, the parting messages as you guys hit the, hit the pitch at the weekend, uh, you know, what, what's the key message as you take to the field? Yeah, I suppose as we take the field, we're just hoping to get a, a massive work rate and performance that we're proud of on the day. Um, we're just hoping that the occasion won't overcome the lads. Um, we're doing our best to, to keep focused and you know to realise that the game will come and go, and um, it's an occasion for everybody else. But it's a game for us, and uh, you know there's no point talking about it now this week. You know if, if we are to overcome the win, that we can we can talk about it for a long time. But until then, our job is just to be in performance on the day, and uh, one, hopefully we can be proud of. Thoughts of both camps there ahead of this 2024 Mesita GA All Ireland Post Primary Schools Senior C hurling final between Skullpole, Kilfinnan, and Kalashta Vera Baligar. John Kyo here in commentary for this afternoon's final. Delighted to be joined by Niall Calvin. Niall, it's finals day, it doesn't matter if it's A, B, C, D, or E. Huge, huge nerves around the place, but it's an exciting atmosphere for both sets of players as well. Absolutely fantastic. I know we were speaking during the week about it, irrespective of what grade your school is in, irrespective of what final they're in. It's a massive day for the school, massive day for the communities as well. Two rural areas, Kilfinnan and, and Ballygar, and I'm sure the school contributes hugely to the community. And we see here today two very um, good teams. I'd say Kilfinnan have huge numbers in their school in comparison to to uh, Collage de Wira Ballygar. I think it's 720 versus 250. But, you know, when you have 15 players on the field, that's all you need from both teams. And looking at the players on both sides, there's exceptional players on both teams. Shane Fitzgibbon, for example, and Christian O'Connor, or Christian O'Gorman, the vice captain, the giant captain for Skull Fall. Exceptional players, Joey Wallace and Connor Kelly. Very, very good for... Um, Colosh the Weary Ballygar as well. There was a doubt over Conor Kelly. He picked up an injury in the semi final. Um, I know he's starting. Whether he's fit enough to participate in the whole game remains to be seen from a Colosh the Weary Ballygar perspective. But a great day for both schools. Fantastic crowd here. I think they have over 1,500 tickets sold um, so far. And there's a huge crowd here. Great atmosphere. And we're looking forward to a big game. Indeed, we are. Conditions absolutely perfect. The field looks great as well. Quick rundown on both teams now, starting with Skull Pole of Kilfinnan. In goals, Cahill Dennehy, full back line of Dara Cronin, James Philpott, and Oren Crowley. John O'Connell, Shane Fitzgibbon, and Kevin Hayden make up the half back line. Gillian O'Reardon and Colin Bresnahan are partnered in midfield. Owen Barrington, James O'Sullivan, and Billy Lanergan in the Skull Pole half forward line. The full forward line, Darren Froon, Christian O'Gorman, and Dahi Dennehy. Over to the Colosh de Vera Ballygar side now. Now in goals, Michael knocked in full back line of Adam Kenny and in wearing number 20, Luke Finnerty replaces Alan Kilcommons. Ethan Kelly completes that line. Half forward line, Rory Coyle and the aforementioned captain of this Ballygar side, Connor Kelly. And Gerard Healy completes the half back line. Midfield, sees on knocked in paired with Carl Maloney. Half forward line, Jamie Kelly, Gavin Mears, and Keen Downey. Full forward line. Harry O'Sullivan, Joey Wallace and Harry Holmes. Now, we mentioned it, they, they, we just have to slightly mention the conditions very quickly because mm. unlike what we've seen over the last few weeks where rain has been the dominant, you know, dominant in the weather conditions, we have absolutely beautiful sunshine here, which is for both sets of fans and both sets of players more importantly, should make for a very exciting, very high quality game. Yeah, you would anticipate it should be a good high quality game. There's a fair breeze blowing down the field as well that delayed one of the teams in the first half, but I was talking to one of the guys from Tulla here earlier on, and he was just saying that last night they were trying to clear the, the, the water from the pitch and everything like that, and even this morning. But it looks in resplendent condition, considering the conditions we've had over the past week. But uh, it's going to be a great final. I think that the toss is taking place out in the middle of the field now with the referee and the, 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 the captains. And this will be interesting to see who wins the toss, who will have the, the wind advantage in the first half. But it's all the importance to be an extremely good All-Ireland final between two really good teams. Yeah, referee for this afternoon's game is John Bugler. Uh, I think. Clare man, of course, bro brother of former Clare player and current senior selector Brendan. You see both the giant captains of 
Skull Fall and the captain of Kalash de Vira Baligar, Conor Kelly. I think Kalash de Vira Baligar won the toss and have opted to play against the wind, which probably surprising, I think, in the first half in the sense that in an All-Ireland final you might like to take the, the advantage, but obviously they're, they're confident in their abilities and... Uh, the, the both sets of fans and both sets of supporters are roaring their encouragement to their teams out here in front of us before the start of this All-Ireland final and uh, it promises to be a good one. The flags are flowing as well, John. Obviously, they're, they're very much the same, so uh, we don't know who's supporting who, but we can tell you there's a fantastic atmosphere. Yeah, the atmosphere absolutely hopping here in Tulla. Full house. I'd say if they could have sold more tickets, they would have. We are going to have a moment's silence now for Aitha Keen. Aitha Keen, I should say. A uh, former special needs assistant in Ballygar who sadly passed away recently. set to go here for the PPS Senior C Hurling All-Ireland Final in Tulla as we mentioned Skull Pole of Kilfinnan in South Limerick up against Kalash de Vira of Ballygar our on the following that moment silence well now in fact we're going to have the moment silence now for Ita Keen, who sadly passed away recently Two very, very good sides as we've seen throughout this competition. Skull Pole getting here after a victory over Glanmire in the Munster final. And then Cistercian College, Ross Gray in the semi final. Kalash de Vera beating St. Joseph's College in the Connacht final. Gail Kalash de Derry in the All Ireland semi final. Where's your thoughts leaning just before throwing here this afternoon? Yeah, it's hard to know. I think Skull Pole, Kilfinnan will be the, the favourites, obviously. They're a, a much bigger school. Uh, Ballygar, Kalash de Vera, the club itself in Ballygar and the two teams at, at league and four roads doing fantastic work as well. Skull Fall will be the favourites uh, but it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, I know that we see Cahill Maloney going straight in at centre half forward now for the uh, the Ballygar side but it's going to be a great uh, All-Ireland final. As I said, Kilfinnan will be favourites but it's all to play for here. Indeed it is. Referee John Bogler getting ready to get us underway here. We're still not fully done here. as a bit of confusion with the keeper on the Kalash de Vera's side, I think he may have been at the wrong end or was collecting the rest of his early up in the other goal. Either way, we'll have a little delay before throwing the end. Anticipation absolutely at fever pitch here in Tulla for this game. 
You will see Colossa Vera Baligar playing from right to left as you see it in the blue in the navy. A lighter blue we'll call it in Skull Pole Kilfinnan. Final stages here before John Bugler is underway and the game is now underway and it is Colossa Vera that have possession of it. It was Jamie Kelly getting a pass away. It doesn't go to hand though after the initial pass and it's Skull Pole winning it into midfield. Killian O'Gorman or Killian O'Reardon I should say trying to win it. Short pass doesn't go to plan. It's picked up by Owen Nocton on the Colossa Vera side. It's Nocton moving play beyond his own 65 playing a low one in. Shade Fitzgibbon is there for Colo or for Skull Pole. He wins a free. Needless push in the back and a little bit of nerves early on as expected. As expected from both teams a bit of nerves early on. We see that the, the change for us, uh, Colosh the Wirra Belligar, Luke Finnerty wearing number 20 is actually playing in the forwards for uh, his side but it's a free out. Uh, Fitzgibbon at centre half. He's the giant captain. He's a powerfully built man. I think he's a member of the Limerick under 20 panel as well. He's a really good hurler and he takes this free with the wind. Absolutely launches this one. It's going to drop short though. Out comes oh. the Colosh the Wirra keeper. He hasn't got to it though and it's a chance now for Darren Fruin. Fruin for Colosh the first goal pole. The defence is tight. Looking for a free throw and keeps going. Over carries his referee John Bugler. The shot at the post. It means nothing. Good defensive play from Kalash Navira and a free out for them. Yeah, they were lucky enough. The goalkeeper Michael Nocton, a bit hesitant coming out for the first ball, and uh, there was two um, skull fall uh, players around him. But eventually, the skull fall player was a judge to have overcarried the ball. Probably a bit unfortunate. I thought maybe he was swung around the neck prior to taking the shot. But it's a free out that's been given, and uh, it'll be taken by uh, the uh, number five. That's um, Rory Coyle from Four Roads. Very good hurler. Was on the Roscommon minor side as well. He's a good player. He takes the quick free. Goes short to Michael Nocton and the Glasgow keeper. Against the breeze, launches one downfield, evades the players that went for it initially. Finnerty is there, so is the centre forward. And it's a free in, it's a free in for Kalosh de Vera. It was uh, Gavin Mears trying to wing possession. It was Skull Pole that had it, but referee said the Skull Pole defender was charging. And referee John Bugler making sure that that free goes in Kalosh de Vera's way. And it's the first chance of the game for Kyle Maloney, a very strong breeze. As Niall Canavan mentioned in our preamble this afternoon, so it's Maloney. A few metres inside the skull pole, 65. A chance for the opening score of this afternoon's game. He struck it very, very well as Maloney. Opening score goes to Kalash de Vera. That's a brilliant score by Cahal Maloney. He's a guy that's uh, an exceptional hurler, highly rated in Galway. He's on the Galway minor panel this year, was captain of the Galway under-16 team last year. Really good player, good start for Colosh de Wiri Great score from Cahal Maloney. Pucko comes from Cahal Dennehy over to that far side, and it's won again by that man, John O'Connell. Sorry, I should say Rory Coyle. And it's up into the forwards now, full forward gunning for his Joey Wallace over on that far side again. Been well marshaled though by the skull pole full back on this occasion. That was James Philpot and skull pole struggling to get the ball away from their own defensive zones. Good work from Kalosh de Villa in this day that have possession. Hand pass into the middle of the park on the 45 metre line. Off goes that man then once more. It's Cahill Maloney. Hand pass off. Goal chance coming here. Shot goes in! Brilliant finish from Ariel Sullivan. What a start for Kalosh de Villa. Brilliant stuff from Maloney once more gets the pass away to Harry O'Sullivan and it's rattled into the roof of the net. That's a brilliant goal by Harry O'Sullivan. Um, in fairness, Cahill Maloney was at the heart of it again. He went through the heart of the uh, skull fold defence, laid the ball off to Harry O'Sullivan. There was only one thing on his mind. He went low it into the back of the net. And what a start for Kalosh to Wirri Baligar against that wind. Great start oh, here for Kalosh to Wirri Baligar, but it's skull pole trying to get a response. It was James O'Sullivan that was running through to try to get the ball across to his fellow forward man but just lost the control of it but it's still Kalosh de Vera on the defensive on the back foot with Skull Pole attacking on that left hand side hand pass comes in it's not the best of ones challenge off the ball referee says that's fine from Conor Kelly it's going to be a free out to Kalosh de Vera and uh, Evan Nyland and his management team will be absolutely delighted with the start now. They'll be delighted with the start. Probably fortunate to get the free out there. Conor Kelly made no attempt whatsoever to play the ball. Uh, got away with it. Uh, and prior to that, the centre half forward, James O'Sullivan, his first touch let him down. There was a goal chance, but great to finish by the corner back. Adam Kenny from four roads. He came across and pulled in the ball. But Evan Island and his management team will be delighted with the start. He's assisted by Johnny Waldron there. They'll be delighted with the start. They lead by 1-1 to no score. Long ball up. It's eventually picked up by Shea Fitzgibbon in the skull pole defence. Fitzgibbon... A judge to have been fouled on this occasion. Strong signalling from the referee, John Bugler. Or John Bugler, I should say. And it's going to be a free two skull pole. And you'd imagine it would be Fitzgibbon that takes this one. Again, good strike initially from the first one he took a couple of minutes ago. 
may fancy his chances with this one. As we said earlier in our coverage here, there is a strong breeze in Skullpole's advantage in this opening half hour. Fitzgibbon, he strikes this one very high. Does it have the accuracy to match? It certainly oh. does. It's a much needed score for Skullpole and a good response after the concession of 1-1. Yeah, great score from the free there from Shane Fitzgibbon. It shows the strength of the mint. He was back in his own half back line and effortlessly he puts that ball over the bar. 1-1 to a point. I think it says 1-1 to two points on the scoreboard over the far side, but it's 1-1 to a point here. There's three between them and a great, a great start from both sides, but a great score there by Shane Fitzgibbon. It's Fitzgibbon that delivers. Good take over there from Rory Coyle. Coyle playing it up the middle, looking for Maloney once more. Beautiful control though from Dahi Denny and they're going to work this ball in. It's a ball across to this near side. Touch isn't fully there from the skull pole man. This time it's Fruin, Darren Fruin. Maybe picked it up. Referee says no, Fruin still going with it from the Glen Rue Club. Darren Fruin with the strike. Darren Fruin with an exceptional score. And there's two between the sides for sure now. Great score there by Darren Fruin. His hand was a bit low to the ground when he picked it, but he showed immense pace when he got away from his marker, put it between the posts. Good score by Darren Froon and won one to two points. Really exciting game so far and a really high quality game. High quality contest indeed there. That one's pulled on first time. Works out for Skull Pole. Getting the advantage of the loose ball. It was Billy Lonergan. Lonergan gave it the pass away and off they go once more. Good running. It's out towards Froon again. He's been hit late there. It's going to be a free in to Skull Pole. And after a nervy, nervy start, they're beginning to settle. Yeah, they've settled into it and uh, there could be a yellow card here maybe for the number eight, Owen Nocton for uh, Skull Pole or for uh, Skull Clash to wear the belly guard. I think he's going to pick up the yellow card just late there as the, uh, the Kilfinnan man laid off the ball. Um, he came in and challenged late. He's going to pick up the first yellow card and it's going to be a scoring opportunity here for Christian O'Gorman. Yes, indeed. It was Colin Bresnahan that was roaming forward with that one. And it's going to be O'Gorman. One of the rare ones on this team, not from Limerick, from Charleville. So Garman again, just like Cahill Maloney for that free. He's just a couple of metres inside the 65. No mistake from the full forward and joint captain on this skull pole. He'll fit inside. It is a one-point game again. 1-1 one, one to three points. Good score there uh, from the free. Uh, from uh, Christian O'Gorman and it's 1-1 uh, one, one now to uh, three points and in fairness with the wind the uh, Kilfinnan team have answered the Ballygar scores pretty impressively it's Bresnahan winning possession now gets it off to John O'Connell O'Connell going down the same line in towards through and you can see that's going to be applied throughout he's too quick for Ethan Kelly at the moment he's been fouled again could be a card as well for Ethan Kelly but either way it's a free in two skull pole and a chance for Christian O'Gorman to level the scores up yeah and in fairness to um, Darren Fune at corner forward. He's, I think he's a part of the Limerick minor team this year. Uh, he's a, a really, really good player and he's been the fulcrum of their attack so far, taking on his man there. Ethan Kelly went past him and uh, a chance from a free here and he's causing problems for the Skullbury team. I'm just wondering, would Belligar against that wind, would they be bring a guy back maybe because they're playing fairly conventionally 15 and 15. They don't seem to have a sweeper back there. Maybe that would be an idea from their perspective, such as the quality of the ball going into the forwards at the moment from uh, Skull Paul Kilfinnan. Goes low with it, saved on the line, didn't quite strike that one. Either way, Michael Nocton was still alive to the situation. Christian O'Gorman though, has got a block on that attempted clearance. It's gone out and it's gone wide, says the umpire. So it's first wide of the game. A scoring chance to level the game. I don't think O'Gorman was going for goal. Just didn't quite strike that yeah, one. Yeah, he didn't strike as well and um, the ball came back then and it came off his foot and went out for a wide. But he'd be disappointed with that one. But in fairness, his side have got the last three points. They've settled well into it after a blistering start from Belligar from Cahill Maloney and then Harry O'Sullivan's goal. But an interesting game so far. Nine minutes gone, one, one to three points. Knocked its puck out. It's one over there and it's one by Owen Barrington. Barrington flicks it inside to James O'Sullivan. Good work from Conor Kelly. O'Sullivan this time has got it into his hand. Still going with it, James O'Sullivan over carries, says referee John Bugler. And in fairness to the referee, he's been very, very quick on that in the opening stages. Yeah, in fairness to him, he took uh, too many steps there. Um, it's going to be a free out. Conor Kelly said came into the game with an injury. It'll be interesting to see uh, whether he lasts the game or the impact it'll have on his performance because he's, he's a very good player from the uh, Four Roads Club. He's the captain of the, the Skull Belligar team as well. As they go short, that one off the ground. And it's back to the goalkeeper, Michael Nocton, and he'll lead the attack here. Nocton goes to switch it up towards midfield. There's a skull pole man there. It's Bresnahan once more. It's intercepted though. It's good work from Keane Downey. Downey gets it off to his midfield partner. That's all Nocton. Nocton oh. delivering side goal chance again for Kalash. We're off his line quickly. It was Cahill Denny to divert the danger. Ball is still bobbling around. 
there, but it's Gullpole that should come out with it with Dara Cronin. Cronin now moving the ball away from danger, plays a low one. Good one to his fullback, Cali Gore. Crowley, Crowley needs a bit of help, plays it into the middle. It's a good ball to Bresnan. Off his left, Bresnan delivers. It's another good ball. It's Christian O'Gorman now. Beautiful touch from O'Gorman. Off his left with the strike. Christian O'Gorman to level it, and he's done exactly that. Danger of one in first goal pole. And they get the score to level it at the other end after clearing the ball away. That's a good score by Christian O'Gorman. 1-1 now to a four points. The sides are level, but it was a half a goal scoring opportunity for uh, Klaus de Weirde Belligar. The ball broke inside and it just came off the foot of Harry O'Sullivan, I think. But eventually it was cleared down the field and a good score by Christian O'Gorman. 1-1 to four points. And Puck out there, not exactly going to plan. That wind now causing a bit of problems for the Klaus de Weirde defence and getting rid of the ball. They've won a free though. Excellent work there from Jamie Kelly. In shorts, there's a free out. And again, Rory Coyle will take some, this one and try to deliver it into what has been a fairly dangerous forward line. There's good movement inside from it's the full forward there, and that is, of course, Joey Wallace. Wallace didn't get to the ball, though, and Fitzgibbon mops it up. Left-handed delivery mm -hmm. over the top. Connor Kelly is first to the action for Kalash Devere. Can't get to it, though. James O'Sullivan eventually getting there to put the pressure on. A battle for possession on the ground. Ball bounces, pulled on on that far side but again it is Skull Paul that come out with possession hooked though and it was a good hook and Jamie Kelly winning the loose ball good bit of play from Killian O'Reardon there for Klaus de as well to keep it in play and get it to his midfield partner that's Colin Bresnan Bresnan needs a bit of help here and it's offloaded didn't go to Skull Paul hand from his point of view Jamie Kelly was in there to win it again the ball eventually comes back to Luke Finnerty brilliant block down from Dahi Denny that's going to be a free out or free in, I should say, to Skullver. A little foul there. I think it was Billy Lonergan coming in with the challenge. And it's going to be a chance, maybe, even with the breeze. Maloney, the way he strikes the ball, will fancy himself. Yeah, he's a good striker, the ball. A um, long way out, though, it must be said, against that breeze. Um, but uh, they'll be happy enough, but Skullver, Belligar, level 12 minutes into the game. Their opponents, uh, Skull uh, Paul from Kilfinnan, have a lot of possession. Got the four points on the board. But it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Joey Wallace, Harry O'Sullivan and Harry Holmes inside. They're a dangerous full forward line if the ball can break inside for them. It is going to break, and it's going to break in around the edge of the square. It's batted away from goal. Good take. It was a full back. James Philpott that got a hand to it. was the cornerback coming out with an excellent play over to Crowley. Crowley came out with the ball, picked it up, was alive to the situation, and ran out and got his free yeah, got chance. the push in the back on the way out there from uh, Joey Wallace, but uh, did well the cornerback, um, Oren Crowley, to come out with that ball, and it's going to be a free out. No doubt Fitzgibbon will take it again, and the way, as we say, he strikes the ball, this could be landed in around the square. Christian O'Gorman makes the space, as does Darren Fruin. Them both run out to that two-man full forward line, and they're very dangerous inside. It's heading towards Fruin. Fruin will just break this one in. Could have broken it in. There was a chance maybe for Owen Barrington running through him. Couldn't do so, though. The ball hits the ground once more, and it's... Kalash Devira trying to come away, pushing the back, says referee John Bugler, free out to the Galway side. Fairness, he's refereeing it um, well so far, it must be said, uh, the referee, he's given frees for, for everything that's a free on, on both sides, and it's going to be a free out here again that'll be taken by uh, Rory Coyle. The four roads youngster, I'm ready to take this one. Looking for movement in his forward line at the moment, Skull Polar alive to it, so he's going to go down the same line. Heading towards his full forward, that is Joey Wallace, but it's Skull Pole that have possession and they have a free as well. And a chance maybe from Shane Fitzgibbon. And we've seen what he can do from long range already. And it's a chance maybe even from that far out, given the strength of the breeze for him. Yeah, this and one between the fairness, post and Skull um, Pole into the lead. Again, a right decision by the referee. The defender was coming out and he was just uh, kind of hurled just around the neck there. And it's going to be a free to Shane Fitzgibbon. And as you said, John, um, he's a wonderful striker of the ball. And he'll probably have the distance, you would think, if he connects properly. Whether he has the accuracy, we'll see in a few moments. So 1-1 one, one to four points. That electric star from Kalash de Vera. Skull Pole managing to respond from it he's hit that one well Fitzgibbon the accuracy isn't there on this occasion no. second wide only of this game has been an enthralling opening 14 minutes and both wides have come from Skull Pole yeah both wides from Skull Pole obviously showing that they have the, the wind advantage in this uh, first half 14 minutes in uh, as you can see Michael Nocton's puck outs the Ballygar youngster his puck outs just dropping just past the half back line such as the strength of the wind as that ball goes out towards that uh, area again a good strike from Nocton this time ball breaking it's well won again on that far side by Crowley. Crowley needing a bit of help. Gets it in by in the shape of Bresnahan. Bets the pass away to Killian. Oh, 
Reardon on Reardon with the strike. It's a good strike again off his left from distance, but again, doesn't have the accuracy. Third wide of the game. Yeah, Skull Pole will be disappointed with couple, the last couple of wides they had. They've had chances to, to go in front. They haven't gone in front yet in the match. It's 1-1 to four points. They'll be a bit disappointed, I suppose, from a close to the Gar side. They'll be disappointed also that they're given chances to the Skull Pole uh, oppor- uh, forwards, and if they get more opportunity, no doubt put those over the bar as the Ballygar man just steps out over the line. Uh, sideline ball now to Skull Pole, who are starting to exert a bit of dominance in this game. In the last five or so minutes, Colossal of Vera after, as I mentioned a moment ago, that electric start with the goal from Great Harry ball. O'Sullivan. That's a good sideline cut, back with play. And it's Killian O'Reardon again. He was just off target moments ago. This one's going to drop short. Knocked in, good hands from the Colossal of Vera keeper and a good clearance to boot with him, heading towards the centre forward there. It's one in the air initially, got to by Gavin Mears, but can't keep it in play. It's going to be another sideline ball for Skull Pole and it's John O'Connell that is set to take this one again O'Connell, lovely cut into midfield the last time he's trying the exact same thing for towards Darren Fruin Fruin again first a lovely touch up into the hand from Darren Fruin does he have to finish the match that one is going to drop that's going to drop over the bar Skull Pole into the lead for the first time and that's another excellent score from the hurl of Darren Fruin. Yeah, John made by the beautiful touch uh, when he came out from corner forward. He just deadened the ball into his hand, got away from his marker and off his left-hand side he puts it over the bar. He's got two good points in play and he is a quality forward and you can see why he's highly rated in Limerick. Oh, absolutely, he's been one of the star turns. Good hands there from Gavin Mears. Hand pass in, it's not the best of ones looking for his Jamie Kelly. Kelly though gets a flick on to Luke Finnerty. Finnerty racing through now under pressure. Finnerty yeah, does get the free, the free... Yeah, well, it's just, just a, a flick of the hurley yeah. across him and he's going to cut down injured here, Luke Finnerty. Maybe nothing too serious, but a free nonetheless given by the referee and a talking to him, maybe a card for yeah. the skull pole defender. On this occasion, I say defender, it's Dahi Denny who's playing well out the field. Yeah, it looks like he's going to pick up a yellow card it's just as Luke Finnerty got onto the ball. He just got a little flip in the helmet there. Nothing untoward in it at all, but it's going to be a free in. But then now, more importantly from a skull, well, we're a Balligar opportunity for them to score a point here from Joey Wallace, the team captain, just to settle themselves back into the game. 17 minutes gone with with the skull uh, pole from Kilfinnan after getting the last five points. Uh, Joey Wallace, you would think, would have the distance here. And uh, from a Ballygar perspective, I'm sure he'll be hoping for the accuracy. Yeah, it is a yellow card as well for Dahi Dennehy. He'll be disappointed with the Glenru youngster with that. Just a little flick, as Niall mentioned. And a chance now, again, for the game to be squared up. Well, for what will be a second time. A few metres inside the 45 is Joey Wallace. And dead straight in front. There'll be no issue with accuracy, you would imagine. Should be no issue with distance. And he strikes that one, does Wallace. And we have a level game once more. Easy as you like from the full forward. Six points to 1-1. One, one. Yeah, good one. score there. Uh, five points to 1-2 is the score. The sides are level, yeah. A good score by Joey Wallace. His first score, he's the team captain. Scored 3-9, I think, in the Connacht final was vice captain of the goal a minor team two years ago. So he's a good player at full forward. Size level, interesting game. 1-2 to 5 points. Two to five points indeed, and it's in midfield again. It's Bresnan, just a too long a strike at that one. Needed a bit more time, didn't happen. Kalos de Vira all over him like a rash here, and it's there to come out and boot it away down the field. Maybe not the best of ideas. It's easily picked up back there. Low delivery inside. It's well picked up by O'Reardon. O'Reardon has had a couple of shots, has missed the target. Chance now coming for Kalos de Vira. Shot coming in from Owen Barrington. It dropped short. It's Fruin is on it again for K- Skull Pole Fruin needs a bit of help gets the shot away off his knees that one's going to go to the left and wide under pressure Darren Fruin doesn't come off from a disoccasion but again he shows how dangerous he is inside yeah he's dangerous inside and he, you know he had a runner off his shoulder if he'd given the ball off and it could have been a possible goal scoring opportunity but every time the ball goes in he's dangerous in there but they're playing with that two man full forward line of Christian O'Gorman and Darren Fruin inside and they're getting the ball into them and in fairness they're dangerous I think both of them have got uh, two points each including three from play but uh, 20 minutes gone here or 19 minutes gone here still level 1-2 to 5 points a uh, tight game as you would have expected here it is Skull Pole with the advantage of a breeze. That's a Christian O'Gorman has it into his hand. Should be another score. He's going towards goal. O'Gorman gets the hand pass away across the fruins. He's going to pull first time. He did pull first time. But so was the defender back there for Kalash de Vera. Excellent bit of work back there. And it's a chance now for them to clear. Blocked down though. Jamie Kelly's delivery is blocked down. Does break though. It breaks kindly for Keane Downey. Downey off his left is blocked down as well. Good work over there from Kevin Hayden. And it's Skullpole trying to come out with possession to get the pass away. It's left into the midfielder. It is a 
Bresnan wants more. Colin Bresnan gives it backwards to his midfield partner, O'Reardon. O'Reardon delivering it inside. It's a bit long. James O'Sullivan, Connor Kelly in a foot race to see who gets there. It's Kelly gets there first, flicks it away. Well, he tr tried to claim it, hit the skull pole man, James O'Sullivan, last. Doesn't work out that way, and it's going to be a sideline ball for the Limerick School. Yeah, a sideline ball over on the uh, far side of the field. And I think it's the corner forward, Darren Froon, who's going over shaking. I know he hits off the left-hand side and probably a fairly good angle for him if he, if he can connect with this properly. But uh, Connor Kelly and uh, James O'Sullivan both lad battling for possession there. The ball comes off Kelly and goes out over the line, the line ball, and in a dangerous position for the uh, skull pole side. It's Froon, strikes it. It's a good ball across. If he can find its target, which it has, it's a shot coming in. The shot comes in from Colin Bresnan. It's over the bar again. They've had a couple just drop over on the top of the net here. Doesn't matter how they drop though, as long as they go over the bar. And that's exactly what's happened with that one. Another score coming for Skull Pole and Stem that are back into the lead. Yeah, good ball across the field from Darren Fune to Colin Bresnahan and he, he pointed it to put his side in front. Uh, probably a bit disappointed maybe with the way he struck it, but it did go over the bar. That's the most important thing. They've gone in front again, six points to one two. There's a battle for possession over on the far side of the field as Keane Downey tries to win it for Belly Gar and I think he's fouled. Yeah, he's got a free over there, Keane Downey. Good work from the half forward. Good diligent work seeing his side earn that place ball and a chance again for Rory Coyle to deliver into that forward line. He's looking at runners. Wallace is one of them. He may be aiming towards him and switching the play. Goes straight down the middle instead towards Harry Holmes. Holmes is up there but so again the skull pole defence. They've been really really good in the last 20 minutes or so since the concession of that goal as skull pole and Dahi Denny did well to get a flick. It was a 50-50 ball. Then he got to it first. Pressure now on that far side on Hayden. It's won over there by Cahill Maloney. And he's won the sideline ball too as Maloney. And Kalash de Vera. Yeah, Noel Quinn, the linesman over on the far side of the field. Adamant that uh, it's a Cahill Maloney ball. And then there wasn't any... Uh Words from the Kilfinnan men to say it wasn't their ball, or it was their ball, but it's gone to Cahill Maloney and Valley Gar over on the far side of the field, and uh, he'll take this line ball. From their perspective, they need to get the likes of Harry Holmes and Joey Wallace into the game, like the full forward line, as you can see, for a skull foal that are causing massive problems in there, as we can see w loads of space inside on top of this full forward line if they can get the ball into the two boys inside, Froon and O'Gorman. There's Dara Cronin coming out one. That one gets his pass away to James O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan shows his pace. Great bit of defensive work from Owen Nocton. Flicked the ball away from Nocton now, looking to switch play. Took away too much time. Gave O'Sullivan a chance to go with it again. Can't win it, though. Got the block in O'Sullivan. Helped out by Owen Barrington. Owen Barrington, and it's a battle on the ground here. It's well won by Nocton. Tried to make up for that mistake. Lovely flick inside from him. Gets the pass away. It's taken up by Jamie Kelly once more. Blocked down, though, as Kelly. And it's present in Inder again for Skull Pole. Dahi Denny Inder gets a flick in it. He's claiming he flicked a hurley. Referee John Bugler says he gave a trip instead. And Denny, of course, on a yellow card. We'll have to be careful, but I don't think there was much in that one. Yeah, the referee was having a word with him there. Just, just tell him to take it easy. He's on a yellow card. There wasn't a whole lot in it, but uh, Owen Nocton, as I said, coming out defence. Probably wasn't too didn't want to hit off his right hand side coming off the left hand side was blocked down eventually he's fouled it's a free out and a break there for the um, the Kalosh to wear a belly guard side I see Evan Island out there having a word with the linesman as well uh, just asking him about something but uh, for a school he's his first year teaching in the school um, Evan Island his first year teaching and to be in an Ireland final is fantastic but for the young players of any school to see a county player teaching them obviously it must fill them with confidence on the other side of the field then you have the likes of obviously Ed Kiley Anthony Punch and Padre McCarthy Ed Kiley I know well um, was a teacher in St Bridget's in Lockray at one stage and was coached their team that won the Connacht Post Primary School's A title in uh, 2017 so he's with um, Skull Paul and Kilfinnan a very good coach as well so a lot of good people involved in both teams yeah, Always good to see massively important of course in these kinds of campaigns in the 2024 Mesita GA All Ireland Post Primary School Senior C hurling final here in Tulla. It is Skull Pole Kilfinnan of Limerick leading Kalosh Vera Baligar of Galway by six points to one two as this one's delivered inside for Kalosh Vera by their midfielder Cahill Malone. It's a good take from Joey Wallace. Wallace now looking for a second score. He struck the shot very, very well as Wallace but doesn't have the accuracy on this occasion. First wide of the game for Kalosh Vera. Yeah, and in fairness to Joey Wallace, uh, Cahill Malone picked him out brilliantly taken out of the air. Made the space to go for the shot himself. It just didn't come in for him and it's the first wide for them. Six points to one two. Four wides for uh, Kilfinnan, one wide for Belligar as that ball goes long down the Field. Long down the field, D towards Dahi Denny. Denny tried to flick it inside. Rory Coyle, though, doing very well to just shepherd it away from possession. But they do have the ball back. The shot comes in. Shooting chance comes again. That's another wide for 
skull pole. It was on Barrington on this occasion with the shot. And those wides with a strong breeze like this, they do start that up and they do start to maybe cause problems later in the game. Yeah, it was a scorable opportunity. He'll be disappointed with that one, Owen Barrington. He made the space to go for the score. Win wide, that's five wides to one now as the ball breaks in the half hour line and Barrington is onto it again. Yeah, good flick away though. Good work by Owen Downey. Downey. Keane Downey, I should say, and it's worked again. Barrington, Trojan work from him to win it back once more. Needs a bit of help though, doesn't find him. It's a turnover in possession. It's Colin Maloney, well challenged there by Killian O'Reard in a battle. Ensues on the ground once more. It's going to break, and it's going to break for Connor Kelly, the captain of this Colossal Vera side. Plays the ball inside, it's not the greatest of balls in, and it's worked by the loose man back there. And it's Skull Pole about to deliver this one inside again. It's John O'Connell delivering low. It's Fruin. That's the target. A lovely little touch to get it away from his marker. Adam Kenny can't get the ball in his hand initially. Fruin needs a bit of help here. Gets it in the hand while on the knees. Darren Fruin now still going with it. He's a chance off his left. Fruin sees a loose man inside the middle of Stahi. Denny doesn't strike that one at all. It's going to break. In goes Killian O'Gorman. Or not Killian O'Gorman. It was Christian O'Gorman that was going in. But Michael Nocton did very, very well to get the clearance away, though. Shooting chance develops. It's a shot, and it's off to the left. Knocked it's oh. back inside. He didn't know where he was. Kept it in play. Got a bit lucky with this one. Has the Colossal Vera goalkeeper. Plays the ball out calmly in the end to Jamie Kelly. And Kelly will find Rory Kyle. And Kyle well, had a chance to clear it. He's under pressure by Dahi Dennehy now. Great work from Dennehy. Chasing down his marker. It's flicked inside, and it's turned to form. A turnover for Skull Pole. And they still go forward with it now again. Maybe the heavy conditions causing a bit of issues, even though it's a beautiful day in Tulla this afternoon. It is on the run now. Colin Bresnan. Bresnan dispossessed by Jamie Kelly. Tries again, though. Does Bresnan. Bresnan has been fouled and free in. Two skull ball, pole and a breathless bit of play. Michael Lockton, I'm sure, giving the clash to Vera supporters on show here and watching with us this afternoon. A few mini heart attacks, we'll call them. Yeah, the ball, he, he, he got rid of the ball initially and was probably a bit slow going back into defence and all of a sudden the the, the skull foul player went for a score and it, it dropped short and nearly went in over his head. He batted it out and in fairness, Rory Coyle had a great chance to clear the ball down the field when solo and the ball is overturned and it's a scoreable opportunity from the free here now for Christian O'Gorman. We have 27 minutes played. Low scoring, it must be said, six points to one two. Difficult free in one sense, but it's still scoreable for Christian O'Gorman. He scored one. Already in this game is Christian O'Gorman. Should double his advantage here. The knot goes from the umpires. Two point lead. Two skull pole kill Finnan. Well taken free by O'Gorman. Yeah, it's his third score of the day. He'll be happy with that. Christian O'Gorman from the free. And uh, in fairness, seven points to one, two. That goal from Kalos to Wira Belligar is huge in the context of the game now. And it's, it's, it's still only two. If that goal wasn't scored, it'd be seven points to two. So the importance of goals in any game is huge. And we can see the importance of it in this game from Harry O'Sullivan in the early stages of the game. Indeed we can here as Nocton clears this one again. It's going to go in Skullpole's favour. In fairness, Skullpole dominant in the game the last 15 or so minutes, but more importantly from Kalosh de Vira's point of view, as Niall mentioned moments ago, that goal from Harry O'Sullivan could prove so, so crucial later on in this game as John O'Connell, the Brewery clubman lining this one up for Skullpole. He's hit some very good sideline cuts so far in the game. Goes short with this one again. O'Connell in possession, does well to stay in play. John O'Connell needs a bit of help, flicks it on along himself, still going with it. Was eventually going to run out of room, and it's Gerald Healy for Kalosh de Vera coming out with the ball. And it's going to be a free out. A little bit of afters there, nothing serious. And it's going to be a free for the Galway side. Yeah, free out there. The defender did well for Kalosh de Vera It's going to be a free out. They'll probably be happy enough. We're coming up towards half time, um, 28 and a half minutes played. There's only two points between them. They'll have a wind advantage to come in the uh, second half. Um, but again, they'll probably need to get their forwards more into the game. Harry Holmes played for the Gala Miners last year. Joey Wallace played the year previous to that. So they'll need these guys in the game. But it's an interesting game. Skull Fall have had the chances, haven't taken them. And there's still only two between them. And the ball bobbling around there from Cahill Maloney's delivery. But again, it's Skull Paul coming out with it. And the clearance came from. Shane Fitzgibbon didn't go to hand on Fitzgibbon having to battle the second time around he's eventually helped out by Kevin Hayden Hayden playing this one along the line Connor Kelly has read it in the right position at the right time he's going to switch play looking for Joey Wallace there's two defenders there Wallace should still get to it ball bounces away for him it's an easier take for the defender there and away come the midfielder there was Killian O'Rear and gets the pass away off to O'Connell John O'Connell needs to strike this one flicks it inside fairly aimlessly and it's going to break for Owen Nocton and Kalashavira kicked away from 
The danger by Gavin Mears. Gavin Mears, well, he's gotten away with one there, I think. Yeah, he had the ball and he just seemed to run into the, his, uh, his opponent from uh, Kalosh the Pole Belly or from Kulfin and he went down injured. Could have been a free the other way. The referee says play on. Yeah, and that's all that matters that John Bugler said play on. And the ball eventually going to be cleared by Killian O'Reardon. It's dropped though on this near side. It's dropped by Jared Healy. Healy doing very, very well to make up for that initial error. Battle on the ground once more. It's really, really tight in this final. Great work there from Jamie oh. Kelly to keep it in play towards Luke Finnerty. Finnerty can't get it into his hand either, and Finnerty pulls first time. Dahi Dennehy is there, it's last hit. A skull pole player, and there's going to be a break in play here as referee John Bugler. I well, think this, he's gone over to the linesman on the far side of the field. Um, not quite sure what happens here, but it's a break in play. But it's fairly lightened up in the last few minutes. There's a fair intense battle out there, and uh, I think the linesman on the far side has said something to. Uh, is it O'Gorman, the full forward? He pointed at, I think, for something that maybe happened, but it's a, it's a line ball uh, to uh, Darren Froon as we're into the additional time. Yeah, not quite sure what happened with that one. It's Froon with the sideline ball. It's a beautiful strike from Froon. It's curling back beautifully. What a score from Darren Froon right on the 45 metre line. And he puts Skull Pole into an 8 points to 1 2 lead. That's a great score by Darren Froon. He's an exceptional player. Two from play, one from the sideline, but he's been a star performer in this uh, first half. 8 points to 1 2. There's a 3 point lead now, and that's a significant lead coming up towards half time. Three between them. Especially given how tight this contest has been. Lost Rivera will have the breeze in the second half, so Skull Pole need to finish this one strongly. O'Connell blocked down. Great block down from Nocton. Ball breaks into the hands initially of Gavin Mears, and Mears has won a free as well. Off John O'Connell, referee John Butler giving the free to Colossopher and a chance for them maybe to deliver a dangerous ball in around the edge of the square as we are, what, a minute and a bit into at the time at the yeah, end of this first half. We haven't been told what the additional time will be, but we're, we're into it at the moment. Uh, there's a good number of uh, Skull Pole players back in defence now, making it very difficult for the the, the Colossus to wear a Belligar side to break through. But as we come to half time here, this ball is going to be launched down the field by Cahal Maloney. Maloney delivers inside, it's a dangerous one, got there by the skull pole defenders out towards Hayden yeah, pushing the back Hayden. there by Joey Hayden Wallace that's the, the second time he's done it and probably a bit of frustration from the full forward he made a brilliant run out there uh, to get that ball didn't get it pushed his man in the back and the chance here for it's given to launch another attack just prior to half time for skull pole that's Shane Fitzgibbon already with one point to his name this probably just outside his compass and despite how good a striker of a ball he is he'll certainly try and land it in and around the edge of the square, Shane Fitzgibbon. It's a beautiful delivery inside. Fruin is there. Oh, Garman is there. It's broken out. And it's worked out okay from a Kalosha Vera point of view as referee John Bugler blows for the halftime whistle. It is Skull Pole leading eight points to one, two. Niall Canavan, your thoughts at the end of that first half? Yeah, just on the last ball, an awkward ball in. It was just dropping right in front of um, O'Gorman and the goalkeeper, Nocton, who battered it, got there first and battered it out. Uh, thoughts on the game? It's been an interesting game. The wind, obviously, with the uh, Limerick side in that first half. They didn't make a whole lot of advantage of it early on, and Belligar got the great start inside four minutes. They were 1-1 one, one to no score in front. But uh, in fairness, Darren Froon has been really, really good. Christian O'Gorman has been good as well uh, for the Skull Pole side. For Kalosh to wear the Belligar, they'll need to get the likes of Cahal Maloney, Harry, Walla, Harry Holmes, Joey Wallace into the game. But they'll be happy enough going in at half-time. Eight points to 1-2. It sets itself up nicely for the second half. Indeed it does. Half time here in Tulla in the 2024 Mesita GA All Ireland post primary senior C hurling final. It's Skull Pole Kilfinnan of Limerick, 8 points, and Kalashivira Belligar of Galway, 1 2. Join us for the second half shortly. score of this afternoon's game he struck it very very well as Maloney opening score goes to Kalosh de Vera from Kalosh de Vera and it's day that have possession hand pass into the middle of the park on the 45 meter line off goes that man then once more it's Cahill Maloney hand pass off goal chance coming here shot goes in brilliant finish from Ari O'Sullivan he strikes this one very high doesn't have the accuracy to match it certainly does it's a much needed score to it up Referee says no, Fruin still going with it from the Glen Roo Club. Darren Fruin with the strike. Darren Fruin with an exceptional score. Well, not only for that free, it's just a couple of metres inside the 65. No mistake from the full forward of joint. Christian O'Gorman now. Beautiful touch from O'Gorman. Off his left with the strike. Christian O'Gorman to level it. And he's done exactly that. Lovely touch up into the hand 
But Darren Frew, does he have to finish the match? That one's going to drop. That's going to drop over the bar. Skull pull. Accuracy would imagine. Should be no issue at distance. And he strikes that one, does Wallace. And we have a level game once more. Easy as you like from the can find its target, which it has. It's a shot coming in. The shot comes in from Colin Bresnan. It's over the bar again. They've had a couple just dropped. He scored one. Already in this game is Christian O'Gorman, should double his advantage here. Did not, goes from the umpire's two-point lead. What happened with that one is Fruin with the sideline ball. It's a beautiful strike from Fruin. It's curling back beautifully. What a score from Darren Fruin, right on the 45.
Welcome back to Tulla for the second half of this 2024 Mesita GA All Ireland Post Primary School Senior C hurling final between Skullpole Kilfinnan of Limerick and Kalashta Vera Baligar of Galway. It is the Limerick side that lead by eight points to one two at the beginning of the second half, which were a couple of minutes from getting underway. There is a couple of subs, or well, certainly one sub on the skull pole side. We're waiting for Clash de Vera to come back out. But either way, joined by Niall Canavan for the second half. Niall, skull pole with that advantage at the break, but crucially maybe in this game as well, Clash de Vera, Baligar have the advantage of a breeze in the second half, but crucially it seems to have dropped significantly in the break. Yeah, it has dropped a small bit, I think, at the break. You see that uh, number 17 is it, that's in, Michael Barry is in, for uh, the uh, Skull Pole team. I'm not quite sure, is it the wing forward, uh, Billy Lonergan, that might be gone off, but we just have to wait and see, but he's in. Um, but it has dropped small with the wind. No, it's still significant, but not in the, the way it was in the first half. But it'll be just interesting to see, the ball will be dropping now on the full forward line, and Darren Fionn and Christian O'Gorman uh, could cause serious problems there. Fionn is a really, really good player. He's got three points from two for two from play and one from an exquisite sideline cut out here. And the Colossal Valley Ballygar side, they probably need to bring maybe Joey Wallace or Harry Holmes out maybe to the half forward line just to get themselves into the game at the start of the uh, at the second half. First two minutes are crucial here, John, in the sense that Baligar would need a score maybe to set themselves into it. If Kaloyf uh, Skullpole get the next couple of points, they could go four or five up, which w would be a, a difficult uh, lead to, to take back from uh, Skull. Uh, we're a Baligar side, but uh, interesting second half hopefully ahead, and we'll hope it's as tight and as good as the first half. Absolutely, we do. As John Bugler, the referee. To get us back underway in this second half. Just checking to see if there are subs on the Ballygar side. Doesn't seem to be at the moment. We will update you. It is indeed, as Niall mentioned, Billy Lonergan, the man gone off on the skull pole side. So one substitute for them. And of course, we are underway in the second half and it's straight into it. His own knocked in. Knocked in for Kalash de Vera. Playing left to right in the second half. Delivers inside. It's a good ball inside as well towards their goal scorer, Harry O'Sullivan. That early goal that gave Skullver or Klaus de Vera a very good oh, advantage. Go. Good ball in inside. Holmes is on the run here for his side. It's a oh. great block by the goalkeeper. Great, brave save from Carl Denny, the skull pole goalkeeper there. And they're trying to man maneuver the ball out of the fence. They've done exactly that. Not the best of clearances, though. And uh, a struggle to get it out of there as Jamie Kelly intervenes for Klaus de Vera. Free out is the decision by the referee in a free out for Skull Pole. What a chance at the beginning of this half, though, for Kalosh de Vera. Yeah, great move up the field. Uh, Harry O'Sullivan got onto it, laid into Harry Holmes, and as they'd say, no better man to get onto it than Harry Holmes, but it was a great save. Something has happened inside it, but there's a player down injured, actually. Uh, but the goalkeeper, Cahal Denny, he threw himself at it. I think it came off his head in the end, and it goes out, and it's a, it's a save. But uh, Harry Holmes will be disappointed there not to put it in the net, but great, brave goalkeeping by uh, Cahal Denny. It was a goal-scoring opportunity, and one you would think that uh, Klaus de Wierde Belligar would have needed, and what a start that would have been to the second half. But credit the goalkeeper, fantastic save. It's if it's given us down injured, which is a worry for... Skull Paul, he seems to be tying his shoeless now, but definitely took a knock, and it was he that went out to challenge Harry Holmes. Didn't come out, but he certainly came out second best as Holmes advanced towards goals. But that challenge gave Carl Dennehy the chance to come out and cover the angles, and it worked out well for the side out from Kilfinnan in South Limerick, as Fitzgibbon is fit enough now to take his place and take this free for the side which he jointly captains with full forward Christian O'Gorman it's Fitzgibbon with the delivery up the middle it goes up for it Dahi Dennehy is there as is Colin Bresnan ball breaking there and it's the corner back who's up there Oren Crowley following his man diligently as by from what I can see anyway it's Barrington now for Skull Pole gets the hand pass away to his own Barrington bottle dropped on that far side it was Killian O'Reardon that was there and a bottle for possession ensues here it's going to break again, and it's going to break to the corner back, Oren Crowley. And it's going to be well, a throwing ball, I think, is the decision. Yeah, I think it's throwing. He hasn't actually indicated if it's going to be a free either side, but he actually oh, he has, has given a free now, a free. yeah, at this stage. But uh, it's a uh, free on. It'll be interesting to see the strength of the wind. We can see it there, Shane Fitzgibbon's free uh, held, and uh, we can see the full forward, Christian O'Gorman, coming out to take the free now, um, just outside the 65 metre line. Um, a difficult enough free, considering he's against the wind. If he nails it, he's put his side four points in front. Uh, three points in the first half for Christian O'Gorman. One coming from a free, two from two frees, I should say, and one from play. Chance to make it point number four. Strikes it well enough, does O'Gorman. Has it the accuracy? It does indeed, says the umpire on the left hand side of the post. Another score, first goal, Paul Kilfinnan. Nine points to one, two, they lead. Yeah, good free there. They've stretched the lead out to four now. 
and that's a good lead for them um, they've got the last four points of the game three before half time and this one puts them four in front and they're on the attack again indeed they are here tugging the jersey unnoticed there it was Kevin Hayden going through now it's James O'Sullivan from Gareth Spillane delivering this one inside towards O'Gorman oh. he's got it in his hand Christian O'Gorman he's gone down looking for a penalty nothing forthcoming initially from the referee Di Denny tries to flick it inside back there is Gerard Healy it's in the hands now of the corner back it's still unable to clear the ball eventually kicked away by Adam Kenny Darren Froon is there went with one hand probably shouldn't have and Adam Kenny now under pressure he throws the ball away he's gotten away with it cleared downfield by Luke Finnerty it's going to break going to break to James O'Sullivan O'Sullivan with a strike James O'Sullivan has said this one over the bar great strike from O'Sullivan into the breeze that's called Paul Kilfin in enhance their lead even further yeah that's a great score by James O'Sullivan Christian O'Gorman will be disappointed not to have got at least a free in uh, but he looked like to be fouled there but a great score against the wind and as you said James the, the wind or John the wind probably has died a small bit because uh, he put that one between the posts from a long way out 10 points to 1 2 5 point lead now for the Limerick School here and it's John O'Connell in possession once more hand passes into the middle and it's oh God, reared and killed Killian O'Reardon off now to Hayden Peter Hayden and pass away it's a lovely pass to the new man on Michael Barry Barry's pass though didn't go exactly to plan and Kalashtavir have enough men back there the ball's broken though it's broken to Darren through so it's going to be a free in for the Limerick School once more and it's a tug on the jersey by Adam Ken you can understand why he did it Darren Froome would have been in on goal otherwise and I think he may have to take a yellow card for that decision it's yeah, fairly easy like one for the referee. Back. Adam Kenny's going to pick up the other carriage. Yeah, he pulled the jersey of Darren Froon as he was going through. And it's going to be a free-in, but it's another tap-over score here for Christian O'Gorman to stretch the lead out to six, which at the start of the second half is a very healthy lead for the Skullfold side. Yeah, they, they've been really in the last half hour of hurling. They've been the better side, more dominant with the breeze. And now at the start of the second half, outside of that goal chance, this has been the same situation. So it's Christian O'Gorman from straight in front just outside the 21 should be regulation one for him and from his point of view one of the more easier ones that he's faced in this second half O'Gorman strikes it between the post 11 points to 1-2 and Skull Paul Kilfinnan really really starting to strengthen their position in this game yeah and you got a Cahal Dennehy save just at the start of the second half would have brought the sides back level if Harry Holmes had put it in the net that could be a significant moment in this game indeed it could here as Michael Barry gets a flick to that one first goal Paul on the goal goes Colin Bresnan Bresnan against Jamie Kelly it's a battle on either side is one that's a right call from the referee it wasn't a 50-50 challenge he put the arm out did the skull pole player on the backtracking Jamie Kelly and it's an easy decision for the referee and the correct one as well yeah free out here and it's a chance here for Rory Coyle to start an attack for uh the uh, Colosh de Wirra Belligar side they really need to score now at this stage uh, they're 6 behind at this stage 11 points to uh, a goal and 2 points and they need to score they haven't uh, scored since a point free from Joey Wallace in the 18th minute speaking of Wallace it's him in possession now great take from that free has he been fouled referee says yes chance for Wallace to add to it there and uh, he's reacted there has Joey Wallace and well, the skull pole defender not making a meal of it I don't think there was too much in it to be fair it was James O'Sullivan back there but it was Wallace with a great take and it was Wallace that wins the free after that and talking to him maybe a card here for Kevin Hayden for the trip it's only a talking to and a warning but either way it's a chance for Joey Wallace to get Kalosh de Vera on the board in the second half yeah scoring opportunity here we have a, a good vantage point of it as Joey Wallace takes this about 30 yards out as Iggs ready to take this free for a skull uh, we're in Baligar got one in the first half Wallace he's got two now doubled his advantage Straight between the posts, lovely strike from the full forward, who, if they are to get back into this game, Kalash de Vera, they'll need Joey Wallace at his very best. Yeah, he'll need to, he'll need, if, he, if he gets on the ball, he's a really, really good player, but a good puck out there by Dennehy again, and they'll need to get their, their, their main players into this game, but uh, in fairness to Kilfin and they're playing really, really well as their wing back, um, wearing number five, uh, John O'Connell comes up the field. Again, it's Jamie Kelly, tireless worker, oh, he's given a free as the referee for a push in the back. Well... Yeah, free out here. Uh, one of those 50-50 ones that could have gone either way. It's gone uh, the way of the, the skull pole side and Shane Fitzgibbon coming all the way from the uh, half-back line to take this free. Well, this could be a huge one if Fitzgibbon can land it. to do lead by five at the moment. Skull pole. A well, chance to go six clear. It is into whatever breeze is here, which maybe is stiffening a little bit. Once more, seem to die a bit at halftime, but again... 
It's Fitzgibbon strikes it. It is a good strike. It's going to drop it. It's going to drop at the edge of the square. Fruin running across. Christian O'Gorman is there for Skullpole. He's going to flick it across the edge of the square. Dahi Denny is there. So is Fruin. Fruin pops that one. Pops it to the left and wide. A missed chance there. And they'll be disappointed with that one. Indeed, it wasn't Fruin. It was the substitute. Michael Barry that struck it. Struck it to the left and wide. Yeah, first wide of the second half. Six wides to one. Quick puck out by the Belligar goalkeeper. Looking for uh, Cahal Maloney. But it's won superbly by James O'Sullivan. Who's got out to midfield and is playing well. O'Sullivan having a big impact in the second half here. Up towards Fruin. Kenny is with him. But Fruin has it in his hand once more. The linesman says he's gone out over the line. I'm not quite sure on that one. He had a better view of it than us, though. It's going to be a sideline ball to Kalash de Vera. Yes, a sideline ball here as uh, Fruin took on the ball. He's just have gone out over the line. Harsh enough decision, I'd say, but it's, gone, it's, it's been given. And it's a line ball here to the uh, skull. We're a Balligar side, and uh, it's intercepted by Michael Barry. Yeah, Barry's done very, very well there. He's been pushed as well. Did well to win that free under pressure from Owen Nocton. And Carl Maloney free in for Christian O'Gorman. And a big, big chance for them to add to their lead again. Yeah, they should add to their lead here, you would think. Nine minutes gone in the uh, second half as Christian O'Gorman gets ready to take the uh, the free for um, his side. He has hit five points, four from the place ball as he gets ready to take this. There's a bit of music coming down to the right-hand side of us as well. And I think the ghetto blasters are on. I think it's the skull pole, Kilfinan men, who, the supporters who have, have them on at the moment. Indeed they do. It's O'Gorman lining up the free. I don't think he's going to be too distracted. Strikes that one, strikes it perfectly well. Does the... Joint captain on the skull pole, Kilfin inside, 12 points to 1 3. Their advantage goes up to. Yeah, 12 points to 1 3. That's six points now for uh, Christian O'Gorman, and they're stretching uh, away. So it's 12 scores to 4, essentially. 12 points to 1 3. But uh, Colossal Wira Villagar on the attack with Harry O'Sullivan. Uh, Sullivan now on the run. Kevin Aidens with him, flicks it inside. It's well intercepted back there by Owen Barrington. Barrington now switches play. It's a good delivery over towards Darren Froon. Adam Kenny is inviting. Tried to get near him, it's Fruin on the way here for Kalashta, for Skullpole's shot, save. saved by the goalkeeper, he did well to get down to it, did Michael Nocton, flicked it away from danger, ball goes out for a 65, that could have been it though, if Fruin had managed to hit the target with the shot. Yeah, Michael Nocton did really well in the goal for uh, Kalashta, we're the beautiful ball across to Fruin, Harry O'Sullivan got it up here from a Ballygar perspective, should have gone forward with it, went back, and all of a sudden the ball found its way up to Darren Fruin at corner forward, took on his man, but credit the goalkeeper. Both goalkeepers have been impressive saves in this second half so far, but it's a 65 to Shane Fitzgibbon. There's nobody at all on Michael Barry if he picks if he picks him out in front of him, but I think he's going to go for the score, possibly. Yeah, Barry was free there. It's kind of a man motioning towards him now that he's going to make sure he's not free. He's gained a good bit of yardage here for this 65-meter free as well. He did well. He struck it too. Fitzgibbon is batted away from danger. Michael Nocton just making the safer option here as Dahi Denny does well to try and get that one under pressure now. It's helped out by Christian O'Gorman. I think O'Gorman's landed quite awkwardly there. He's going to be in a bit of trouble as the ball is go, go, does go out wide, but Christian O'Gorman landed awkwardly as that one went over the line. And, well, it's going to be a, a, a puck out for Colossal Vera when yeah. the play gets back underway. But you can see the danger of O'Gorman and um, Fruin inside. When they get onto the ball, they're exceptionally dangerous players. Uh, they've built a good platform now, a good lead, 12 points to 1-3. A skull uh, pole lead by six, but Kalosh the Balagar need a couple of scores just to set themselves into the game with this, this second half. Knocked it, goes short of the puck out towards Jamie Kelly. Kelly with the ball, he's going to go along with it, much more direct, but there's plenty of defenders back. That's dropped by Shade Fitzgibbon, a regulation one, maybe took his eye off it, thinking he'd no one near him, and it is. Kalosh the with this shot, that's an excellent effort it's on goal. Score. I think it's Joey Wallace that landed that one. Or is it Cahill Maloney? It's Cahill Maloney with one of the scores of the game to make it a five-point deficit. Brilliant score by Cahill Maloney. He's an exceptionally talented player and he puts it over the bar and they'll need himself and Holmes and, and Wallace to get the scores. But really, really good score there by uh, Cahill Maloney. Well-worked move. That's his second score of the day. He got the first score of the game. He's got the latest and that should be an inspiring score now for his side. It's Darren Fruin going up for that one again there. Didn't win it. Huge leap from the forward, but... Wasn't able to hold on to the ball as he moved away from it. Fruin picks it in again now. And that's going to be a sideline ball. Could actually be a free here to Galash de Vera for handling it on the ground. I think that's what the linesman is intimating. And Yeah, I think it's a line yeah, ball. It's actually. a free. No, it's going or to be given as a free. free. To, and rightly so. We have a perfect yeah. view of okay. it, Niall. Handle yeah. the ball out over the line. Free in. And it's Cahill Maloney lining this one. This would be a huge 
not only score for Colossal Verde if he can land it, but a huge momentum builder as well. Yeah, he got the last point from play. If he could get this one from a free, it's, it's obviously he's a long way out with it, but he will have the distance, you would think, with that wind. If he puts it over the bar, it will be a huge rallying score for Colossal Verde. So it's Cahan Maloney with a high, high strike. He struck it well. It's curling, it's curling, Great and it's score. curling over the bar. Does not get much better than that as a strike from Cahill Maloney that's a superb score by Cahill Maloney he's got two points in a row one from play a great score one from a free another great score all of a sudden back to four points 12 points to 1-5 yeah we're going to have a substitute here as well I think on the yes, Dahi Dennehy coming off we'll update you with that in a moment Dahi Dennehy coming off the skull pole side is wearing number 15 Number 20, actually, it's Adam Fruin that's coming in. Yeah, another one of the Fruins from Glenru. Ball breaks to Cahill Maloney again. It's Maloney now. They need him to have an impact in this game. Do Kalashavir Maloney good take. Ball. Good take from Joey Wallace. Wallace with the strike here as it hits the target Great once score. more. It does indeed. And just when Kalashavir needed their biggest men to come to the fore, that's exactly what's happened. Three point game again. Yeah, great score. Three in a row for Kalashavir of Baligar. Cahill Maloney has been involved in the last three scores. He's got two of themselves. Great ball into Joey Wallace. He took on his man. And all of a sudden, the dynamic of the game has changed. Three points at three minutes, and Balagar have it again. Indeed they do, and it is their goal scorer, Harry O'Sullivan. What a score this would be if he can get it. Never looked like getting there. It goes tails to the right and well wide of the target from Harry O'Sullivan. Intercepted the puck out very well. Didn't have to finish the match. Yeah, he'd be disappointed with that, but he won the puck out well. 12 points to 1-6 is all to play for again. The next score is crucial in this game, you would feel, as uh, it's broken in the middle of the field. Harry Holmes tries to win it, as does uh, the number 11, James O'Sullivan, for his side. Yeah, he does, James O'Sullivan. On the ground there, maybe in need of a bit of attention as the break in plays. The physio comes on, so do one of the mentors on the... Skull pole side, it's Ed Kiley over there giving Michael Barry a bit of advice as well while he's there. It's the other side of having a stoppage in play in Nile. You can get some important messages onto your, your players as well. Yeah, and it probably breaks the momentum somewhat of the Kalosh to wear the belly gar side, but it's going to be a throw in in the middle of the field. The ball breaks. It's breaking, it's breaking towards, well, no one in particular after the ball has dropped down from referee John Bugler. Bobbles away and it should be. Jared Healy, Healy yeah. it is Jared Healy off to Jamie Kelly Jamie Kelly now for Kalosh Tavira flicks it inside Adam Kenny not the greatest of touches it breaks so man, Harry Connor Holmes Kelly. is inside with nobody at all on him if they can get the ball yeah. into him he lose possession though in the middle yeah. of the field yeah. Connor Kelly doing well to hold on to it under severe Took pressure a lot of steps. over yeah. carries it's going to be a free in to Skull Pole and it's just a chance for Kalosh Tavira to get the ball away get it inside to the free man didn't happen and it ends up over carrying from Connor Kelly and a free in to the Kilfinnan school. Yeah, just took an extra step there as he tried to get the ball away. Obviously, he's not fully fit. Uh, he has been injured coming into this game, but it's going to be a, a free for uh, Christian O'Gorman from the 65, from his own 65 metre line. He's a, he's a long way out, and uh, if he nails this, it'll be a super score. He would indeed. O'Gorman with six points to his name so far in this contest. Strikes it, strikes it well, but it's going to the left and wide. So it remains a three-point game, and that could even be a bigger boost for, well, the referee is going in to check with his umpires. It looked a wide ball from our angle here. Yeah, I but think it's a wide ball. I think it's, there may be something happening previous to that. Um, we didn't see it, obviously, but he's calling uh, someone aside. He's calling, uh, is it no. a player from both sides? It is, I think it's third, number third, Darren Fruin and Luke Finnerty. Luke Finnerty, is it? Luke Finnerty. He's, actually, he's calling four players in, would you believe it? Two from each side, so we could see possibly four yellow cards here. I didn't see what happened, John. I don't know. Did you see yourself? Maybe a bit of little messing off the ball as the 65 came in. Nothing yeah, much to do about nothing by the licks of it either way. Yeah, no yellow ball. cards. Just speaks to two players from either side, and it's going to be a puck out. 17 minutes gone. We're into the last quarter of the game, and for one of these sides, the next 15 minutes will be the, the highlight of their lives because one of them will be the All-Ireland champions in 15 minutes' time, you would think. Adam Kenny gets that strike away down the field for his side. Great take over there. It was the midfielder, Killian O'Rear, and off goes his fellow midfielder. Great defensive play, and yeah. Great flick away from him. It was Bresnan on the run. Bresnan's involved again. Adam Kenny gets the ball for Kalosh de Vira, and it's going to break to Jamie Kelly. Kelly does well, strikes it. Battle inside here, breaks. It breaks off the leg of one of the skull pole defenders at the fullback, James Philpot. Off goes Harry Holmes now for... 
the lost of Vera, it's Harry O'Sullivan, he's gone out, he's give, got the free as well, and this is a chance for Joey Wallace to make it a two point game. Yeah, he should put it over the bar, and if there was ever a professional foul, that was it, because Joey Wallace had just broken away from Harry O'Sullivan, and it would have been a goal scoring opportunity taken down by uh, Fitzgibbon, so this would be a chance here to bring it back to a two point ball game, as um, J Joey Wallace uh, should put this between the posts, the foul there on Harry O'Sullivan. In fairness to Kalosh, the Wirra Belligar, John, they looked in a bit of trouble, they were six points down, they've got the last three scores. This would be four in a row. It'd bring them back to two points with about 11 minutes to go. Yeah, it's very, very much up for grabs in the final quarter of this contest. Kalosh de Vera's confidence building with each score. They managed to put over Cahill Maloney with two of them. And, of course, Joey Wallace with the last and a chance to make it. Four on the bounce, as Niall Canavan mentioned. Yes, Probably shows the, the strength of the wind as well, um, in the sense that they've got, that they've got a foothold uh, in this game, in this set. Uh, uh, second quarter, the third quarter, the first quarter of the second half, they got three points in a row there. This would be four in a row, and it should bring it back to a two point ball game with 11 minutes to go. Yeah, Strain Fitzgibbon was the man limping away after the concession of that foul from Skull Pole's point of view. Joey Wallace, a couple of points to his name in this game so far, but it's Wallace with a relatively straightforward free, taps that over. And we now back to two points. It is 13 points to 1-7. An absolutely enthralling finish awaits us, I think, Niall. Yeah, it looks that way. Uh, and you got to credit Kolosh to Wirra Baligar. They looked in serious trouble. They've got four points in a row. But if Darren Froon inside or Christian O'Gorman gets chances, they're going to be extremely dangerous. I think Froon has come out the field a small bit now just to try and stem the tide somewhat. But it's an enthralling game so far. Very little between the sides now. And the last 10 minutes are going to be uh, decisive in this game. Uh, two between them as the ball is cleared up the field. Indeed, push it's going to be a free for Kalosh de Vera, as you said, a push in the back. I think uh, either Cahill Maloney or uh, Rory Coy looks to be taken, both are interested in it. Yes, Maloney has gone back to his own half-back line. Maloney's got the nod, yeah, Maloney's we'll see, got the nod. And we'll see the strength of the wind here. We saw Shane Fitzgibbon in the first half from much the same position, was able to, to land the ball over the bar from there and to launch it in towards the square. And uh, this is a, a crucial moment in the game as uh, Cahal Maloney takes the free. Three points for him. He's been exceptional in this second half. It must be said he's dragged his team back into this All-Ireland final. Goes low with a good movement up front. It's in towards Joey Wallace. Wallace now with the ball. Up against his marker, Dara Cronin turns him. Joey Wallace on the run. Got another free and that's worked out brilliantly for... And it's in fairness, it's been Wallace and Maloney that have led the charge really for Kolosh to Willie Balligar in this uh, second half. Great ball by uh, Cahill Maloney down the wing to Joey Wallace who made the run. He's going foul. It's going to be a free. And I think is there a yellow card or a speaking to, to one of the players? But um, a free in here. I think there's a yellow card for a Kilfinnan player, probably for maybe for persistent fouling. And um, it's uh, the corner back actually, um, Dara Cronin from Kilmalik, who's just after picking up the yellow card. But a scoreable opportunity from the free here for Joey Wallace. Difficult, it must be said, he's at an awkward enough angle, but he's just on the 20 metre line out near the sideline. If this goes over the bar, we'll be back to the bare minimum. Indeed, we will. Wallace now to make it a five point in on the bounce for Kalos de Vera. Wide, I think, is it? Or not, I think it's gone wide actually lads it has it that's has a gone wide yeah he'll be yeah, disappointed, he'll be disappointed with, that. with that one will Joey Wallace a chance to make it just a solitary point in the difference here this puck out falls in midfield to Colin Breslin unable to take it up Darren Fruin is there ball doesn't come up for him either does it to second attempt Darren Fruin well that should be a free in no he's given a free Darren Fruin well he's gotten away with one there doesn't matter from our point of view in the commentary box and it's going to be brought forward even further, I think, here, is it, from referee John Bugler. A bit of mounting towards the referee. Fruin was unlucky. Yeah, free in here. And uh, it's the centre half back, Shane Fitzgibbon, who will uh, take it for his side. But uh, crucial moments coming up in the game. 12 points to 1 7 is the score. There's two between them. And it's tight now in this game. And it's going to be a free to Shane Fitzgibbon. Two point game at the moment, Fitzgibbon on the 65, probably 72 or 3 metres on the angle. It's Fitzgibbon striking this one. It would be huge if he can land it. Fitzgibbon has struck it. He struck it over the bar. Three point lead for Skull Pole. We played nearly 52 and a half minutes. That could be a massive, massive score at the end of this game. Great score by Shane Fitzgibbon. I think there's some confusion over the, uh, the score, but 
Uh, I've just asked a couple of lads here. 13 points now to 1-7. There's three between them. I think the score is three between them. 13 points to 1-7. That's Fitzgibbon's uh, second score. Great score by Shane Fitzgibbon. What a score from long range. And it was a score his side needed as Harry Holmes picks up the ball. Yeah, definitely a three-point game here as it's played into the middle from Holmes to his midfielder, Nocton. That's Oh, Nocton delivering a long, long one inside towards Joey Wallace. Wallace is the man out to it first. He's been marked tightly this time by the full back. James Fullpot, it's what. Wallace playing this one low across the square and it's easily dealt with and it's Owen Barrington with a ton of room touch wasn't there from Barrington though and it's a battle to win it back it's Clostervera have it, Skullpole have the battle as Rory Coyle plays it downfield it's over the head of his intended target Keane Downey, out they come with possession, second time of asking, the free is given to Oren Crowley and it's a free out to Skullpole who seem to have got their tender up once again here now. Yeah, they have. That free by Shane Fitzgibbon was, was crucial. Just coming after Joey Wallace's one had gone agonisingly uh, wide and they, they've settled somewhat again, three between them as Fitzgibbon will take this free, no doubt he'll go along with this one as we have about six minutes of normal time to go. Yeah. Huge effort by both sides throughout this 2024 Mesita GA All-Ireland post-primary schools. Senior C hurling final as Darren Fruin tries to win this one for Mike for Skull Pole. Colin Bresnan is there as well. Skull Vera have plenty back there too and it's there. Defender Adam Kenny that gets the ball away from danger. Ball goes up. Hayden was there for Skull Pole, but so is Cahill Maloney but Hayden has done brilliantly to win that one. Off to Owen Barrington well hooked by Cahill Maloney. Can't keep him out of the game for very long but he's been unable to get the ball away or get it off to a teammate as the ball hits the ground once more in front of us in the commentary box here in Tulla and out comes Derek Cronin for Skull Pole, hand pass inside to Colin Bresnan back it comes to the defender, he's going to have a go he's going to get it towards the goal what a score score of the game from Derek Cronin put Skull Pole two points to the good here in Tulla that's an unbelievable score by Derek Cronin he came out of defence and he launches one straight between the posts an unbelievable score, the score of the day as you said from Derek Cronin, it puts his side four points to the good, from our vantage point you could see it turning in and turning in and turning in all the time, he puts it over the bar great score, and two really really good scores for uh, Skullpole to, to re-establish themselves into the game, they looked in a bit of bother but in fairness to them, they've come well into it two superb scores, 14 points to 1-7 We've been a sub on the side, Skullpole side we'll update you with that in a moment or so As Skullvera, Kostavira, I should say, with Joey Wallace playing this one inside towards Keane Downey. Off his line quickly as Carl Denny, he's missed it. No panic back there, though, from Shane Fitzgibbon. Flicks it away from danger. Battle between him and Harry Holmes. It's neither able to win clean possession of it, but Keane Downey has, then drops it, bounces and bobbles into the hands of John O'Connell. They could do with him getting rid of this one. He does exactly that in the end, into the midfield. Great take from Killian O'Reardon. O'Reardon strikes it up towards Darren Fruin. Fruin maybe looking for an insurance score here. He's on the 45 as Darren Fruin. He's working his way past his marker. It's Darren Fruin in on goals. Fruin strikes it. Fruin strikes it. Over the bar it goes. Five point lead yet again. First goal pole. Yeah, great score by Darren Fruin. He's an exceptional player. Loads of space opened up in front of him. He scored his fourth point of the day. And it's 15 points to 1-7. They've extended out to a five points lead. They have answered the Kolosh the Wirrabali Gar scores with four of their own. And they've gone four in front again, fifth or five in front at this stage, 15 points to 1-7. Some superb scores there, it must be said, uh, for the, um, the Limerick side. The last three points have been superb from Shane Fitzgibbon from the free, Dara Cronin, and now Darren Froon. And they've gone 15 points to 1-7 in front with three minutes to go. Yeah, that substitution was Michael Quaid on the field uh, for Owen Barrington a couple of minutes ago there as Kalash Vera trying to get to this one again. It's Cahill Maloney over against James O'Sullivan. It's Callan Bresden in there as well, but Cahill Maloney has it. Maloney trying to switch play, plays a low one in towards the middle to no one in particular, first time up. But in to try and win it was Gavin Mears, but away come Skull Pole once more. Adam Fruin in possession, the number 20, and substitute in the second half on another Fruin from Glen Rue, he struck that one, strikes it to the right and wide, can't really blame him for going for it in this, the latter stages of an All-Ireland final Yeah, he went for the score, Darren Froon, it's nine wides to, to three at this stage, ball is pucked out uh, quickly but you can see there maybe the, the strength of the wind isn't as strong as it was in the uh, second half but uh, some superb scores taken by both sides in this game and uh, Darren Froon is on the ball again, this number 13, a live wire he's had a serious game Yeah, it's Froon delivering inside, picks out a good pass to 
Adam Fru and Fru and now he's just had a shot moments ago. He's had a second go. Gets a bang on the money second time round. Does Darren Fru or Ar- Adam Fru, I should say. Yeah, Adam Fru. We're Froon, so yeah. used to saying Darren, we get Adam in as well. Yeah, Great he, score from Adam. He's had two shots at the goal. The last one he put wide, that one he puts over the bar. 16 points to 1 7. Uh, in fairness, there's two minutes to go here. They look like they're going to win the All Ireland. Baligar are bringing on a substitute over on the uh, far side of the field. I think it's uh, the corner forward. It's, it's, it's Keen uh, Downey that's gone off for Colossal World of Baligar over on the far side of the field. But in fairness, uh, Kilfinnan have been really, really impressive when they got opened up the space and got some superb scores and have been the better side it must be said despite the fact that Colosh de Wirra Belligar came well back into it uh, with four points in a row to bring it back to a two point ball game they had a couple of chances maybe to, to bring it back to a point they didn't take them and Shane Fitzgibbon's point then through Derek Cronin's one after that were crucial and uh, they've extended the, the Kilfinnan lead out to six points and uh, a minute and a half to go yeah, It was Harry O'Sullivan's effort that could have really put the cat amongst the pigeons in this game but they're not giving up yet certainly Cahill Maloney isn't anyways he flies down the field Maloney's still going he gets the strike away what a score from Cahill Maloney maybe too little too late from their point of view either way the score is given brilliant score from Maloney yeah Cahill Maloney has been good he's got four points three from play and in fairness he has led the charge in the second half for Colossi to wear a ballet gar great score by Cahill Maloney 16 points to 1-8 yeah substitution on was Oshin Finneran moments ago and there's going to be another one now as Sean um, yeah Oshin Finneran is in yeah for uh, his side there's another uh, substitute on as well as we see uh, number yeah, 20 Luke, going Luke off, team, off Finnerty. who started the game of course in place of Alan Kilcommons I think Kilcommons is after coming on there Alan Kilcommons so it's Kilcommons for Finnerty obviously an injury for Kilcommons that has kept him out of this game there was a battle on the ground once more. Michael Quaid, one of the skull pole substitutes, heading towards the ball. Great pick up there from the aforementioned Darren Fluid. He's going to have a go. It's going to end up being delivered inside towards his, co- his captain, joint captain on this team, Christian O'Gorman. Doesn't work out for them. And away comes Harry Holmes. And the Kalosh de Vera side. Holmes delivers inside towards Wallace. Can't get it up into the hand. That's good, diligent marking. Just got the ball out of the way to the full back. Philpott and James Philpott goes again to try and win possession. It's kicked off. It's kicked out over the line by Carl Maloney. And that is probably that here in Tulla. Yeah, we're into the additional time. Um, Baligar, Closh, were tried to work a goal there. Harry Holmes tried to get the ball into Joey Wallace. There was two or three players around him and the ball just comes off the foot of uh, Cahill Maloney here. And in fairness to Cahill Maloney, he has been superb for uh, Closh, the were Baligar. But the other end of the field, Darren Froon has been superb as well for... Uh, his side skull Paul Kilfinnan and we have two two guys both of them have got four points each and the points that they've got have been out of the top drawer indeed they have here as John O'Connell gets ready to take the side and powers one towards Maloney and Kevin Hayden Hayden's been fouled free out uh, Sean Maloney caught that one square in the chest a huge powerful strike from the sideline caught by John O'Connell and Cahill Maloney felt all the force of that and ends up and Talash de Vera end up conceding a free here and you can be sure a limping, a visibly limping Shane Fitzgibbon will be in absolutely no rush to take this. He'll be in no rush to take it. As you see, the, the crew from uh, Skullfall, Kilfin, and their, their supporters are ready to storm the pitch here. We've a minute into the additional time. We haven't been told what it'll be, but uh, it looks as if at this stage they're going to win the All Ireland title. And in fairness, if they do, they'll be worthy champions. They have been superb today, as have Colosso to Belly Gar, but their opponents just been marginally better. Yeah, it's been a cracking, cracking contest here in Tulla in this senior sea. All Ireland hurling post primary schools final. Of course, both sides playing for the Michael Cusick Cup pair as Harry Holmes on the run plays it inside to Maloney. Maloney strikes it's well oh. saved by the keeper, just did the thing, made sure he did the safe thing. And out comes Oren Crowley, who's been outstanding as well for the skull pull side towards Michael Quaid. Quaid throws it up, it's blocked. Another pull on it there from the other corner back on this occasion. It was Dara Cronin who popped up. With that outrageous score five minutes ago, a foul on Kevin Hayden, a free out again to Skullpole. Yeah, free out, good save by the goalkeeper, probably just at a good height for him really, if he was along the ground, it could have been uh, a bit more dangerous for him, but he did well, the goalkeeper Cahill Dennehy, and it's going to be a, a free out and a free out to the uh, Skullpole side. I see the wing back, uh, Kevin Hayden is from Brewery, is getting just some running repairs from the coach Ed Kiley and Edison, get on with the game here, the time is well up, with two and a half minutes played, five between them as Fitzgibbon will clear this down the field. Yeah, a bit of cramp for Kevin Hayden as the physio comes on again. Shane Fitzgibbon has been told to get on with it by referee John Bugler. He does exactly that. Launches one over to the far side again. It's Fruin. That is his target. 
Darren Fruin needs a bit of help over there, doesn't forthcome. And away comes Jamie Kelly for Kalasha Virid as well to get the ball onto the hurley chase back. Only one of the skull pole defenders there played up the line towards Finneran. And it's well won by Harry Holmes though for Kalasha Virid. Holmes now on the run, flicks it inside. It's taken on now by Finneran. Oshin Finneran on the ball. Has been fouled, says referee John Bugler. Yeah, they'll probably have to go low here and try and work a goal, but there's uh, 16 points to win it. There's five points between them. We're three minutes into the additional time. This could be the last play of the game. Joey Wallace, the team captain, is in possession of the Schlitter. I'd say he'll try and work a goal here, or try to work a goal here for his side. Adam Fruin down in black play for Skull Pole. So it's Joey Wallace. Lining this one up, they need something and they need it very, very fast too. Kalashta very strikes at Wallace, it's saved, it's blocked away, it was the keeper that was out. Shot again, blocked down, it's Hayden that was there and they come away with possession too. Skull pole played along the line, it's a good ball up the line. Bresnan goes into it, making sure that Connor Kelly didn't win clean possession of it. That's what counted. In the end, the do through Gavin Mears. Mears switches play. It's into Harry Holmes. Holmes, good touch. He's going to run at the defence. Holmes is through on goal. Holmes, great block. What a defensive play from Schaaf. It's given. That's the full-time whistle. And Kel Skull Pole and Kilfinnan are All-Ireland champions. They've come out with a 1-16 16 points to 1-8 victory here in Tulla in the Mesita 2024 GEA All-Ireland Post-Primary Schools Senior Sea Hurling Final. It is victory for Kilfin and it's victory for Limerick over Galway here in Tulla. Niall Canavan, worthy winners in the end. Yeah, in fairness, uh, Skull Pole were the better team. Um, they got the, Ballygar got the goal early on that uh, just kept them in the game in that first half. And Skull Pole got some great scores. Darren Froon, Christian O'Connor, or Christian O'Gorman, I should say. And then in fairness to, after half time, the, the Limerick School got the, the first few points. Looked to be pulling away. They got three in a row. But in fairness, Kalosh, they were a Ballygar, came back into it, led by Cahill Maloney. He got uh, two points. Joey Wallace got, a point, got two points as well. And all of a sudden, there was two between them. But in fairness... Uh, Shane Fitzgibbon came up with a big score. Dara Cronin came up with a big one, as did Darren Freeman or Darren Fruin. And all of a sudden, it was 15 points to 1-7 again. But in the end, the better team won. Uh, and fairness to Skullpole, Kilfin, and congratulations on them on winning the All Ireland Post Primary School Senior C hurling championship final. And but credit also to Colosh the Weirda a very small school in. Um, in County Galway on the border with Ross Common and it's a credit to them their, their club in Ballygar are doing superb work as are the Four Roads club in that league who was involved but credit also to the clubs involved in the, in the Limerick school so but nothing between the teams really but in fairness that just bit of quality that uh, Skull uh, Pole had in the end showed with Darren Froon exceptional at corner forwards there were the All-Ireland champions congratulations to them but there was no honour lost in defeat for Colosh that were a Ballygar In a game like this you, you mentioned it at one stage of the first half I think Niall that it could be for some, for a lot of these players. They may not go on to further things in their hurling careers, although given the talent we saw, they very well might. But this is such a huge occasion. Yes, it's not the A, it's not the B, but it's an all Ireland final at the end of the day, and it's huge credit to the performances from both sides that both teams put out there today. Yeah, and you said it's not the A or B, but it's for these two schools, this is the most important thing for them. And like, you, you, it's not comparable really with, with some of the, the schools you have, say, Belly, Scloch, the Weird of from a Gawler perspective, about 250 students, and then you go to maybe Presath and Wright where you have 1,500 students almost. So you can't compare like with like in that sense. And the wonderful work that's going on in all schools throughout the country and all schools throughout Limerick and Galway in the promotion of Gaelic games, the promotion of hurling, um, is phenomenal. And you saw players on either side here who will go on to play for Limerick, who will go on to play for Galway um, in the future. And to play in an All Ireland Schools final for their school is, is fantastic, and it's the pinnacle really. And these guys will look back in years to come, irrespective of victory or defeat, of the times they had in 2024 to represent their school in the All Ireland final. It was a fantastic game. Worthy winners, Skull Paul Kilfinnan. As I said, they had star players throughout the team. The giant captains were exceptionally good, as was uh, Darren Froon, obviously. And for uh, the Colosh the Weirda Ballygar side, I got a credit, Cahill Maloney. He got four points, three from play and one from a free. Um, Joey Wallace as well got some good scores. Um, but again, the better team won in the end. They'll be delighted and uh, fair play to them. But again, credit to both schools for serving up a fantastic uh, final here in scenic Tulla in County Clare. Darren Froon, who we've been told is man of the match from this afternoon's clash. Really hard to argue with. It's probably a toss up. Him and Cahill Maloney is the two most influential players. Like, can we just talk about Darren for, for a moment? Because, you know. You, you, you come to an All-Ireland final day, it's a, it's a big, big day, obviously, that's putting it mildly. 
you need your best players to come to fruition. Darren Fruin, and we'll talk about Cahill Maloney first maybe. You could see that he, at one stage in the, in the second half, it, was, it was looked very much that Skullpole were going to run away with this game, but Kalosh de Vira came back into it, and it was mainly down to Cahill Maloney. Yeah, he was very good in fairness, and uh, himself and Fruin were exceptional players. I think well, Maloney is under is, is minor this year for Galway, and he'll he'll be on no doubt on the Galway minor team. Darren Fruin, I'm not quite sure is he a minor. I think 19s. he's a minor. He's under 19s for for, for Limerick, and uh, he is a really credit to him as well. But um, for both those players, they're going to have fantastic careers. They're they're really exceptional players, and, and they showed it out there today. The, some of the points they got um, were exceptional. Like young Fruin got two points from playing the first half, but he also got a superb sideline cut. Cahill Maloney got the first score, set up the goal, and then when they needed scores in the second half, he got an absolutely unbelievable score over on the on the sideline. Um, uh, it was a superb score and uh, really, really good scores from, from, from both from both of those players. But the players who played for both teams throughout the field from number one, and credit both goalkeepers as well, there was a fantastic save at the start of the second half from Cahill Dennehy from Harry Holmes that could have been crucial in this game. That would have brought Colosh to Wira Belligar level. They missed another crucial free at one vital stage in the game as well. And the goalkeeper, Michael Nocton from Belligar, he made a great save as well in the second half. But overall, credit to both teams. I can see the, the giant captain, Christian O'Gorman, is here. The man of the match, Darren Fruin, is coming up to as well and Shane Fitzgibbon is coming up here as well to, 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 to get the cup right beside us here the Michael Cusick Cup uh, in honour of a, a great Clare man and a, a great founding member of the uh, the association So uh, and we're in Tulla as well which is uh, apt as well in County Clare where Michael Cusick obviously is from Yeah quite poignant as well of course after the Michael Cusick Cup presented in Clare this afternoon as well almost time for the presentation it's going to be very difficult to get all the skull pole players over from their uh, just delighted fans is putting it mightily I suppose despite the, the protestations of the MC here next to us they're trying to get them over as quickly as possible we and see if Shane Fitzgibbon in fairness John if they all come up beside us I think we'll be in trouble we, we, we could we'll be, be in a bit of trouble we'll be in a bit of right bother our right to come up beside us here but I'm sure they'll come over in a couple of moments and uh, and they'll be they're obviously thrilled to, to win an All-Ireland and any All-Ireland for any school is, is fantastic and um, you know the, all the schools finals are on this weekend in hurling and, and in football and all the schools that are in them you know irrespective of what grade it is it's extremely important for their schools and it's, it's the game that they'll be looking forward to but um, I think that's it uh, fair play to Skull Football from Kilfinnan they're the All-Ireland champions they're coming up here beside us they have I'd say brought all the school with them and the Skull Wirra from Belligar Kloss the from Belligar are over on the uh, far side as well and um, fair play to them as well yeah, massive, massive occasion here. Then many thanks to Niall Canavan for his company this afternoon here in Tulla for this 2024 Mesita GA All Ireland Post Primary Schools Senior C Hurling Final. As I mentioned here in Tulla, the Michael Cusick Cup going towards this victorious Skullpole Kilfinnan side. Skullpole of Kilfinnan in County Limerick. They're the victor. To the victor go the spoils moment's time now we're going to hand you over to the presentation side and of course that will be heading up will be joint captains Shane Fitzgibbon and Christian O'Gorman the Roman Atlacas Shane Fitzgibbon and Charleville's Christian O'Gorman of course Danny Darren Fruin will indeed be getting his man of the match award as well as they come up here you see Shane Fitzgibbon now and Fruin and there's one more to come. We see who's at Fitzgibbon and Fruin are up here at the moment. We're waiting on Christian O'Gorman. But there it is, victory for Skull Pole in Kilfinnan. You can see Darren Fruin there, ready to get his man of the match award. Well, well deserved as well from his point of view. Four points he got throughout. And was unlucky for another couple as well. He jigged and he jagged and he zigged and he zagged throughout this contest. Did the young Glen Roo, who, young, young star, it's easy to call him at this stage. He certainly has a bright, bright future ahead of him for both Glenru and maybe for Limerick down the line as well, the likes of Darren Froon. He receives his Man of Watch match award any moment. Now we're still waiting on Christian O'Gorman, I think, who's trying to make his way up as well here. There's fantastic scenes as we look out from the commentary box here in Tulla onto the crowd a huge huge support from Skull Pole to see their side collect the Michael Cusick Cup in a couple of moments time here As, yeah, we finally have Christian O'Gorman so we can complete the presentation we'll now hand you over for the presentation I'd like to hand you
hand you over to Joe McKay from the Post Primary Schools Board to do the presentations of the trophies and the Men of the Match Awards. Joe. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of uh, Bun Skull and the Hearing, I'd like to welcome you here to Dr. Daly Park in Tullow. Uh, a pitch ground steeped in the tradition of Clare Hurling. Obviously, it is also fitting that we're here to uh, commemorate a Clare man, teacher, and founder of the GEA, Michael Cusick. I'd just like to take the opportunity to thank the Tullow Club for the presentation and hosting of the game, not alone today, but there will be hosting another All-Ireland final here again tomorrow. John Bugler and his team of officials for the efficient way that they, they handled the game today. Uh, Masita, our sponsors. And uh, finally, I would like to take this opportunity not alone to congratulate the coaches of the two teams today for having their teams so well prepared for such a great match that we've had, but also to, to um, acknowledge the work of the teachers and coaches that spent so much time from last September right through to some of them today, some of them a couple of weeks ago, uh, in supporting and developing our students and also in promoting Gaelic games in, their in our schools. Um, we had a really fine day game today. Sporting, fiercely competitive. Uh, for both schools, it was a great achievement to be here, and it's also a great promotion for the ability of both schools. It is important to acknowledge the role that Ballygar played in this game. You fought bitterly to the end. You now have to contend with disappointment, but in time, that disappointment will fade. But the memories of the run that you've had here and the friendships that you will develop will never fade with you. Kilfinnan, exceptionally good team. Congratulations. You are worthy champions. There is little more to be said. There were many contenders out here. So first of all, I would like to present uh, the Man of the Match Award to Darren Fruin from... Now we'll just hand over the Michael Cusack Cup to the joint captains, uh, Shane Fitzgibbon and Christian O'Gorman. And I think one of you has a, um, I hope, an exceptionally short speech. Firstly, to Ballygar, commiserations, lads, especially towards the end there, you gave us some hard game. You're a great bunch of lads, and uh, no doubt, keep going the way you're going. Success will definitely come to you. Sola, <laughs> GA pitch, the facilities, lads, we couldn't ask for better. The pitch out there is very good. Thanks to the ref, the umpires, and all the club officials and volunteers here today. <laughs> to our parents, 
Then Monday morning trainings down in Glenroo, AstroTurf, well in Blackrock AstroTurf. They weren't easy to the easiest thing to get up for. Everything you do brings us closer as a group. And we wouldn't be, definitely wouldn't be where we are without Gilles. To the students, the school pool. You were like an extra man out there for us today. Your effort all throughout the year, lads. All throughout the year, drove us on numerous times. You're the best supporters around. We couldn't ask for any better. Lads, we love you. To our bus drivers, John, Kevin Fenton, Dickie Rail, Tommy O'Sullivan and Noreen Hayes for bringing us to all the matches and all the trainings. I'd like to thank Glenroo GA, Blackrock GA and also Staker Wallace GA for the use of their facilities throughout the year. Whenever we needed for training and matches lens, we always had it. <laughs> to the main man, our principal, Mike O'Hara. Anything we wanted during the year, lads, we could go to him, he'd give it to us no bother. It's great to know, we had such great support in the school all throughout the year, and it's all driven by the man himself. Oh. To our teachers, all throughout the year for putting up with us and having support throughout the year, we're very grateful, lads. To the panel of players here in front of me today. <laughs> Lads, it's an absolute honour to take to the field with you. I could not ask for a better group of players and a better group of lads. You deserve this for the effort and sacrifice you put in all year, boys. We're now rewarded. To our management, the three main men, Mr. McCarthy, Mr. Punch and Mr. Kylie. Without you lads, none of this, and I mean none of this, to be possible. The effort you've shown all year, the training, sacrifices, efforts, all the training sessions driven by the three of you, we couldn't ask for any more. Lads, you're truly amazing. We can finally say we're all Ireland champions. A chance for the opening score of this afternoon's game. He struck it very, very well as Maloney. Opening score goes to Kalash de Vera from Kalash de Vera and it's they that have possession hand pass into the middle of the park on the 45 metre line off goes that man there once more it's Cahill Maloney hand pass off goal chance coming here shot goes in brilliant finish from Harry O'Sullivan it's given he strikes this one very high doesn't have the accuracy to match it certainly does it's a much needed score it up referee says no Fruin still going with it from the Glen Roo club Darren Fruin with the strike Darren Fruin with an exceptional score. Christian O'Gorman now, beautiful touch from O'Gorman, off his left with the strike, Christian O'Gorman to level it, and he's done exactly that. Lovely touch up into the hand, from Darren through, does he have to finish the match, that one's gonna drop, that's gonna drop over the bar. Skull pole, in the final target, 
Richard has it. A shot coming in. The shot comes in for Colin Bresnan. It's over the bar again. They've had a couple just to happen with that one. It's Fruin with the sideline ball. It's a beautiful strike from Fruin. It's curling back beautifully. What a score from Darren Fruin. Right. That's a very, very good event. Go. It's a good ball in inside. Holmes is on the run here for his side. It's a oh. great block by the goalkeeper. Great. Great. Right. Cleared downfield by Luke Finnerty. It's going to break, going to break to James O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan with a strike. James O'Sullivan has said this one. Over the bar. Great. Uh, we're in Valigar. Got one in the first half. Wallace, he's got two now. Doubled his advantage. Straight between. Indeed they do. It's O'Gorman lining up the free. I don't think he's going to be too distracted. Strikes that one. Strikes it perfectly well. Does every over towards Darren Frew. Adam Kenny is inviting. Tried to get near him, it's through and on the way here for Kalasta for Skullpole. Shot saved. saved by the goalkeeper. The shade Fitzgibbon, a regulation one, maybe took his eye off it, thinking he'd no one near him, and it is Kalasta Vera with the shot. That's an excellent effort on goal. I think it's Joey Wallace that left. And Maloney with a high, high strike, he struck it well. It's curling, it's curling, and it's curling over the bar. Does not. Maloney it's like good take from Joey Wallace. Wallace. With the strike here as it hits the target it's once more. more. It does indeed. And just when Kilos so far, but it's Wallace. With a relatively straightforward free. Taps that over. And we now back to two. The angle, it's Fitzgibbon striking this one. It would be huge if he can land it. Fitzgibbon has struck it. He struck it over the bar. Three brought him. First goal pole. Hand pass inside to Colin Bresnan. Back it comes to the defender. He's going to have a go. He's going to get it towards the goal. What a score! Score of the game from Derek Gordon. In his way past his marker. It's Darren Fruin in on goals. Fruin strikes it. Fruin strikes it. Over the bar it goes. Five point lead. Past the Adam Fruin. Fruin now has just had a shot moments ago. He's had a second goal. Gets a bang on the money second time round. It's the Pigeons in this game. They're not giving up yet. Certainly Colin Maloney isn't any as he flies down the field. Maloney's still going. He gets the strike away. What a score from Colin Maloney. Maybe too little, too late from this. Going to run at the defence. Holmes is through on goal. Holmes, great block. What a defensive play from Schaaf. It's given. That's the full-time whistle. And Kel Skull Pole and Kelfinnan are All-Ireland champions. They've come out with a 1-16. 16, 16 points to 1-8 victory here in Tulla in the Mesita 2024.